All right, so I know what you're thinking. You're gonna go ahead and skip to all the good stuff, but let me go ahead and do you the favor so you don't skip this video and pull out the wallet and show you everything that I'll be using. Now, this is just your standard, uh, I believe this is a, yeah, this is a Mosey Oak wallet that I carry every day. Uh, let's get right into it and I'll go ahead and show you the contents. So, let me see if I can zoom in. All right, so here's the wallet, standard wallet. Uh, as you can see, my ID, I got credit cards. Uh, starting off with the shelter, what I'll be using right here, one of those Mylar Space Blankets. You can pick these up anywhere for roughly around a dollar to three dollars. I always carry one of those in my wallet. It's, it's a little pack heavy, but it'll make, it'll make out for uh, a good survival situation. Next up, in here I have an SE survival card that you get with an SE knife. On the back it kind of gives you some good ideas for a shelter, building a fire, and stress calls. And what is wrapped around this is a 50 pound test line, uh, braided, looks like a braided 50 pound test line fishing, fishing line. Uh, I don't know roughly how many feet are on here, but it looks like it'll be enough to make it at least 24 hours, which is what we're going to do. Also, we have, and I will drop a link in the description down below, so if you guys want to check out the description, this is the Grimm's Workshop and Survival, uh, survival cards that they have. On here, you can see I already took out a hook, uh, you got uh, lures. You've got um, spring snare uh, traps right here, those little uh, block looking things. Uh, you have a knife and you have a spear down here. And it also comes with a little sharpener, a little grinding pad. So there's three things right there. Um, another thing right here, ferro rod. I always keep a ferro rod in my wallet because you, you like I said, you just never know. Um, you know, you could use, uh, everything in, in your wallet is always multi-purpose, you know, it, it could be used for many things as big as your imagination, uh, will go. Uh, besides having some cash, uh, I always keep my receipts, I know that's crazy, but this makes for awesome tinder when you can't find all natural tinder out here. So, uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm forgetting anything, I guess we'll get down the road and see. Uh, like I said, the only thing I brought out today was a wallet, and uh, I didn't bring no food, I didn't bring no water, I'm going to try to catch a fish, uh, and then if I, if I can, make maybe a burn bowl, uh, or try to find a way to purify some water if I need it, but, do, but given that this is only a 24 hour challenge, uh, it's not extremely crucial, so I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so since I didn't bring an axe or anything like that because I can't fit that in my wallet, what I'm going to be doing is finding uh, some decent sized branches that had fallen and I'm going to do a high rise shelter. I got this idea off of really big monkey one. Uh, awesome guy. Uh, I get a lot of my ideas from him. I watch all of his videos. So definitely check that out. I'll leave that link in the description as well. Uh, and we're going to try to replicate what he did for his shelter. I think it'll work for what I'm doing out here. So we're going to just try to go out and find some decent sized logs that I can uh, haul back to where I'm making my little base camp at. And hopefully uh, we get a shelter going because it's going to be getting dark soon during that this is winter. Uh, the temperatures are actually pretty nice out. I think it's roughly around 38 degrees. I'm supposed to get to a low of 33 tonight, so we definitely want to get a nice shelter going and that space blanket is going to keep us warm. So, see you guys back at camp. Alright, I found a branch. I went ahead and stuck it in between two trees that were fairly close together and kind of pried back on it. Got it to break. That's a good little tip if you don't have a, a saw or an axe on you. So we're going to take this back and we're going to start setting up our shelter once we get one more final piece and hopefully we can get something good coming out of this. See you guys then.
Alrighty guys, so what we're gonna need uh, off the bat, we're gonna need that survival card that has all of our paracord on it. And we're gonna need our Grimm's Workshop survival card as we need to cut that line. So I'm gonna put that right there. Find out where I put my SC survival card. Right here. So we're gonna take this line and we're going to hold this up to where it's gonna be flush with the, uh, the side of this wood that's hanging down. Now the way the really big monkey did this was he used the same tree and put two uh, two logs or two branches across for his shelter but due to the amount of line that I have for this challenge I'm just gonna use uh, what's already here and let's get this set up so I think about right there is good take our line we're gonna make a just a single overhand knot on this branch back over just make sure that this is secured since this is a 50 pound test line I'm going to use a lot more than what I would normally do in case I was like using paracord or something Now we're going to get into our Grimm's Workshop survival card. We're going to take out the knife because we're going to need to cut a few things up. And I'm excited to see how this, this knife does. So there it is. I don't know if that's going to show up good on, on camera or not. It's not big, it's about the size of maybe the uh, pointer finger. But let's see how she does. See if I can show you guys me cutting this line. Oh yeah, snap that line right off. Awesome. Now we're gonna do is just kind of tie this knot up. Just kind of lace it in between those lines that we have that goes around the tree. Gonna do the same thing over here on the other side. Put my knife somewhere right there where I can 
see it. We're going to take out our paracord card. Or, not paracord, but our... We're going to take out our survival card, our SE survivor card, that has our 50-pound test line braided line for fishing. And we're going to do the same thing that we did over there on that other side. We're just going to bring this up to the height that we want to go straight across to this log that's already been fallen. And what we're going to do is simply you can use your, your legs and kind of cross them over the wood to hold it in place while we start off our knot. Now we're going to take our knife and we're going to cut off this excess and there you go. So now we have our bed made out for both sides right here. Uh, I wanted to give a, again a shout out to the Big Monkey One. Uh, I was watching his video for his extreme cold weather uh, shelter system that he did and I got a lot of good ideas off of that for this video. So. I, like I said, I'll definitely drop a link in the description below. Check his channel out. You guys will be uh, very impressed. All right. I'm switching over the GoPro. It's a lot easier to carry around. Uh, I don't know if you guys can kind of see this. There we go. So we got our bed platform right here, we're going to have to lay sticks straight across and uh, get some logs on there, that way we'll have uh, something to lay on and then set our shelter on top of that. So hopefully everything turns out. Uh, what you see in that little bag right there is actually a, thermo, uh, a thermal for my camera due to it being around 30, 34, 35 degrees out today. My camera just seems to... to my camera seems that it doesn't, my camera, yeah. my camera seems to not want to record in this cold weather, so, you know, it's, it's whatever. Uh, all I'm doing like right here is uh, finding stuff like these, these logs that I could lay on, or a smaller stick even, that are a little bit nice and round, uh, that'll make for a good bed. Here's another one right here. Just going around picking stuff up like that to lay across and get my bedding made up. 
Uh, it's gonna. Yeah, I have nothing else besides what's in my wallet to use. So it's not gonna be comfortable, but it's 24 hours, and it shouldn't be that big of an issue. So and we're gonna try to get a fire going too. You know, because fire is gonna be really important for keeping the body heat and all that good stuff. So definitely, definitely want to do that. Even though you know it is 30, 30 something degrees out, it is quite nice. So let's go ahead and get this wood set up. I grab a few pieces and I'll see you on another camp. side that I have tied up to the tree and because it's dragging a little bit and I want to reverse this make sure that I don't fall it doesn't collapse on me at the end of the night I'm going to take another log and I'm going to uh, brace it and lift it up just like this I'm just going to wide grab the, the white branch as you can see I have the bed pretty much made out it's reinforced I got logs uh, counterbalancing each other to hold the weight I might do one more but I think it's time we start setting up the shelter so let's go ahead and get a better view all right so next step up we're going to go ahead and pour magical survival wallet we're going to take out our shelter system which is the space blanket so let's go ahead and get this set up what we're going to do is unravel all this
All right, so plan A, um, which I'm gonna show you guys. The space blanket that I bought was absolute garbage. It broke on me. So what I have to do now is come up with a different shelter system instead of doing the one that I was gonna do uh, that Big Monkey one did. I'm going to now have to redesign a whole new shelter because it's gonna be a lot colder now doing it this way sleeping on the ground. So yeah, let's go get some more wood. Yeah, that's like the uh, that's the reality when you're out here is you know you might have a game plan, but then something can happen and it all changes. So I'm not very mad about the fact that the blanket had ripped and I plan on doing like a mini tent with it. Uh, so I just have to improvise and that's kind of what survival is about. You know, you just have to improvise and, and do something uh, off plan because in a survival situation, it wasn't planned for you to get stuck out here or, you know, have to find your way back because you're lost or so you're going to have to build a shelter overnight because it's getting too dark to wander through the woods. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to improvise now. And uh, I'm going to leave all this footage on here so you guys can see what the original game plan was. And uh, we're going to get started and do a shelter system, a different shelter system. It sucks because I really had a beautiful shelter uh, that I had vision for this. Uh, it was kind of the whole reason why I did this whole wallet challenge is because I knew what I could do when it came to a shelter system because that was going to be the hardest thing and hardest thing to do on camera is to tell people that I'm going to go out to the woods and survive using only what I have in my wallet and the first thing that for me that comes to my mind is well what would you do for a shelter system because you can't fit a tent or a tarp in your wallet so now I have to improvise and right now I'm just going around picking up uh, dead fallen wood to uh, help improvise this shelter system and hopefully uh, hopefully everything will turn out all right like I said this is just a 24-hour challenge so it shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad All right, so we have our logs laid across the top. We have our logs laid across the west side of our shelter. Let me go ahead and take you guys over and give you guys a, a better view of the inside and the other side. So there you guys go. You guys are kind of looking uh, directly inside of what the shelter looks like. And I'll take you guys over to the other side and I'll show you that. So there we go across the top we have all our wood laid out down here underneath we have our space blanket and we have a log right there because I'm going to kind of use that as a, a wind deflector uh, in case we get any wind that comes from this side as well 
Uh, but there you guys go. That's what she looks like. Let's go ahead and get a fire started going. While we get the fire going, we'll go ahead and try to set up a fishing line. Alright, so what we're going to be doing is we got a stick here. It's about a little over past my arm reach uh, from armpit past my fingertips. And what we're going to do is just make a little fishing rod. And we're going to take a little, uh, another stick that's about the size of your hand. And we're going to tie that on the stick itself. So what I'm going to do, let's see if I can do this on camera. Pull a little extra out and hold this in place. We're going to pretty much let this over like this. And then under and over. So we got a nice cross going. And we're gonna kind of use this as like where our reel would be. And what we're going to do is take back our knife back out. This thing's like a razor blade. This thing is super sharp. This is the Zachary Fowler edition too. If you guys don't know Zachary Fowler, check him out. His channel is Fowler's uh, Makery and Mischief. Awesome channel. Awesome guy. So there we go. So now that we have that on place... So it should look something like that. And then we're going to take how much cord we think we're going to need for fishing. We're just going to kind of wrap it around our stick that we got here. Now we got our desired length. We're going to take our knife. We're going to cut this. And as I said, we're just going to go ahead and wrap that around the edge of this stick that we have tied on. Just want to overlap that first strand. You don't need to put a knot on it or anything like that. Just going to keep going around and around. So we have all of our extra cordage on there. And kind of put it towards the end too, that way it'll slide off as soon as you try to cast it out. I think I put plenty on there. So I do have plenty, plenty of cordage on here. I should be able to go just about anywhere I want to go with this. So but that's okay. You know what? Like I said, if we don't need all of this, or if we get a snag or something like that, we do have extra cordage right here. Uh, that way we can 
go ahead and safely use what we have left for other projects. Alright, now we're going to need to uh, fish our, our lure and our hook. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab our Grimm's Workshop and Survival uh, Survival card and we're going to go ahead and pop one of these lures off and we're going to go ahead and use this. Sometimes when you got like a fishing line or something like that, that's hard to get through because there's a lot of broken strands on it. Just kind of give it a quick uh, swipe on the tongue. That's going to help you get it through the hole. Just like that. Now what we're going to do is just kind of make another knot. We're going to tie that on real good. go we have we have our lure on place and it's time to get our hook so we're going to reach back over here for our grin's workshop and survival and we're going to break off a hook As soon as we get that hook on, we're just going to make another simple overhand knot. Just like that. And I'll do it one more time too. And I'll give you guys a better view of what's going on here. Alright, so as you guys can see, we got our lure on our line and we have our hook so let's go fishing alright so I got my fishing rod right here that we made up Unravel some of this and I'm gonna throw it downstream. See if we can catch anything.
So I don't know if you guys can see right there is my fishing rod. I've got it impelled in the ground. I'm just letting that lure and hook float downstream. As you guys see, the water is very, very clear. But just because it's clear does not mean it's safe to drink. So we're not going to risk it for a simple 24-hour challenge. I'll come back and check on this here in a bit. Alright, so we're going to take our survival card out again. We're going to take our knife back out. Uh, now as you can see here, I kind of got, I kind of made up some, uh, let's call it like bird's nest. Uh, shredded some really fine uh, cacti and some uh, corn husk. Just kind of made that into a nice little bird's nest. We're just going to take this knife and see if we can't do uh, some feather sticks. Maybe on something smaller and see what happens. Keep shaving all that fine dust off the uh, tree itself, off the stick. That way, we're gonna have a nice, easy fire. Like I said, this knife is nice. Let me get a better close up. there guess what else we have in our magical wallet if you guys are like me you guys save up a bunch of uh, receipts so we could actually use this as tinder as well we're just gonna rip these up throw these on there like this and that's gonna help us get our fire going All right, so now we got that we're going to take our little knife right here and we're going to place our ferro rod directly on top of Alright, I am all done here guys, I'm going to keep adding fire, adding wood to the fire and hopefully everything works out good. I still got wind blockage behind my back, I got my uh, space blanket and I should be good to go so I will hopefully I can get my camera, keep my camera warm enough to record the morning shot if not. Until next time, thank you. Uh, other channel shout outs. Uh, my good buddy Mark. I can't go, you know, I can't say enough about my buddy Mark with Rolling Homestead Wild Edibles. Check him out. We're going to be doing a huge collaboration with him and another good buddy, which is Chris Thorn. Uh, his YouTube channel is Drop Forward Survival. Check him out. If you guys like this, make sure to subscribe, comment, share. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.